We got the boys. There we go. What That's up, good. squad? <laughs> Yo, What's yeah. going on? Dude, how much us. cooler would this be if we were all sitting at an actual sofa and just sitting around a room chatting? That would be ideal. That would be good. It'd be like the male toxic version of the view. <laughs> That's right. The, to the toxicity would be overflowing. What a, yeah. tr what a trigger that would be. <laughs> yeah. <well. laughs> um, so, uh, Bobby, Anthony, thank you for, for taking the time tonight to, to join us because, you know, we're going to keep this a chill night. We're not like, I really want this to be super, I mean, again, I want to hear everything that you guys have to say. I mean, the, th the three things that we've been talking about over the last really week has been, you know, the three things we need to focus on. Number one, what happened November 3rd, 2020, which we're seeing a lot of reports come out, where COVID came from, the lies of Fauci, that whole thing. And number three, what did the FBI know on January 6th? Um, because I think if we can figure out these three things, the entire thing crumbles. The, I mean, what, what are your guys' thoughts, right, you know, from any of any three of those topics? What comes to your guys' mind? Well, I think that, I think that it's, uh, it's more than documented over American history how many nefarious acts have been perpetrated by the alphabet agencies on the American people and a variety of other people around the world. And oftentimes those things are under lock and key and sealed for many, many years, and then they come out later. So for us to think that somehow now all of a sudden that these things are not gonna happen in real time is insane. So obviously we know that that is happening. A lot of the times I think it's so obvious that people that are kind of in the know are like, is how is everybody not, realizing this and myself as a person that was actually in dc on the sixth looking with my own two eyes and being very observant and very uh hyper aware of what was going on i just remember thinking to myself so many times like number one this is a trap number two i haven't seen any antiquates anywhere i haven't seen one queef not not have haggling anybody why would they not be doing that the only reason that they would be doing that is because they knew that there was only one thing that had to be done in one place at one time to foil the whole thing if you know that you could win the game by just slam dunking in the in the last second of the game why would you even play so to think that to think that this is to think that this didn't happen I think is insane. There's more than enough evidence in history. You know, that's a good point, Jordan. There was no Antifa anywhere that entire day or night. In every single other pro-conservative rally that there's been, they always go to try to stir up trouble and then record what happens after they instigate something. But yep. you're right. There wasn't any actual black block people there except for the people that were at the front trying to get in the White House and breaking windows and stuff like that. Me and Jordan had a couple of them that had the Trump hat on but they had the LGBTQ tattoos and the and the rainbow bracelets and all that. Which look, I don't know if you've been with the if, if you've been with the conservative movement for longer than eight minutes, but you know if you're a gay conservative, you're a person and then also gay. Not I am just gay, which seems right. to like mark every leftist that's gay. It's like before I'm a friend, before I'm white, before I'm orange, I am gay, 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 and it just did not seem like. That was a Trump supporter that was there yelling for everybody to break the windows or the other four that I saw. I, I, to I posted, violence. I, you know, I took a risk and I'm surprised Instagram left it up because I posted these exact same videos on January 7th and January 8th, which is what triggered me getting completely. I couldn't post. I couldn't go live for 94 days. But, I, you know, I've been seeing a lot of in January 6th videos because, I, you know, Anthony, were you there on January 6th or no? Uh, nice try, Fed boy. Um, <laughs> I was, I was no, there. No, 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 no. I was, I was definitely there. Uh, but the thing is that I actually got to hear like Trump speak. Like I was kind of like toward the front. Um, uh, we got like tickets to go inside, and so by the time we actually made it like out, uh, we were already getting like uh, notifications on Twitter that they had already broken to the Capitol. Yes. And I think um, what you guys mentioned, I think it's really interesting how you guys. I'm not trying to say there's like a correlation here or anything like that. I just wanted to bring up another point was, so here in Los Angeles, I had 
been documenting Antifa and Black Bloc and Black Lives Matter for over a year and a half with the riots and stuff. And there was one event that I went to where they were advertising that they were going to show up and they were going to be uh, in front of a LA Sheriff's Department. And when I showed up, nobody was there. It was the only time that had ever happened. And I was looking at my brother and I'm like, where are they? Like they always show up. And then all of a sudden that same LA Sheriff's Department, we see cars just, I mean, sirens everywhere. And I'm like, something just happened. Like this isn't normal. Like they advertised that they were going to be here. They're not here. And now the entire department department is leaving. And I don't know if you guys remember, but there were two LA sheriffs that were ambushed by somebody that got off a bus and they got shot in the face. And, and like the and the woman sheriff, she got shot in the jaw and she kind of like dragged her partner over to like a side building and she was able to kind of like stand guard until they were both um, sent to sent to the hospital. They were picked up. And, and that was the only time ever that Antifa didn't show up to where they said and, and, and it was kind of like, I'm not one a conspiracy theory anything but it, it was just really interesting that that same day that nobody was there not a single soul that ambush happened and it kind of felt like january 6th the same vibe i'm like where is the opposition i'm like where are these guys they always show up now all of a sudden there's bombs planted at, at the dnc the rnc now all of a sudden we have these people inside the capitol and i was just like huh this is really interesting this is only the second time i've ever experienced this and well, and, let, and both well, times it seems like something bad happened let's talk about what we know because what we do know 24 different people that have been unindicted without any of their identification being named why we don't know this is very interesting on january 6th insurgents usa you had joel uh what's his name john or joel sullivan what's his name crap i'm blanking right now um john sullivan john sullivan he had on his website insurgentsusa.com which we know is he's, he's been a past blm activist he's a He's a socialist. He had on his website, which I have the screenshots, 11 a.m. Washington Mon Monument, January 6th, kick these fascists out of D.C. That's where they planned and met. Trump didn't speak till 12.05. So mm -hmm. they met at 11 a.m. They weren't going to the speech. The entire, the, every single Trump supporter that was there on January 6th, while, while the Capitol was under attack or whatever the hell they want to call it, we're still listening to Trump's speech. All Correct. hundreds of thousands of us were like the time that we eat. Like, I'll never forget. Like right when Trump finished his speech, I made the I, I mean, I like right when he finished, I was going like we're doing the YMCA. I don't know if you guys heard the music like it was a party. Everyone was happy. And then like halfway through, you know, because it's like a 45 minute walk halfway through, you start hearing boom, boom, flashbangs are going. You see smoke. and We're like, what the heck is going on? on yeah and i started walking over there before everybody else did because me and like 500 other people got so bored with the speech because it was not inciting and it was so <laughs> lame that we were like let's just go to the to the capital now i guess so we literally just started moseying our way while being like oh that's neat trump is reciting the same thing he talked about like three days ago in georgia thanks buddy but yep. i thought you were going to do something today that would have been like like within your legal boundaries but still awesome um, yep. This is, and this, and, this and so is we got other... so bored, and we start. I was one of the first people, probably, to walk over to the Capitol. First five hundred people, because we were all a big group, and we were the first people to show up there. And the the booms and everything were going off before we walked over there. Yeah, no, the, the, yeah. a big thing as well that that is in this report, and this, and then we can move on from January six, but. The, what Tucker re reported with the Revolver.News article is that the big sign that really shows where these questions are are two things. Number one, six months before January 6th, there was 15 – I don't know if they were oath – I believe they were Oath Keepers that planned to – or Proud Boys, one of the two, that they planned to like you know take over the capital in Michigan to take the governor of uh, Whitmer. You know, they, they planned this entire thing. There was 15 people that planned this attack. Six of them <laughs> were FBI informants. So the question is, if you have 33% of the people that were a part of this planning, how involved were they? And these are the questions. Were they actually planning it? Were they the ones that were, that were um, like pushing to make it happen? Were they, were they the ones that were like, hey, we need to do this, and then the other 11 got – you know, the other nine are the ones that ended up going to jail, and the other six were out of it because they were unindicted? 
these are, I mean, there's so much evidence. And again, it's like, why do we not have 14,000 hours of, of um, video footage? Why do we still not know who the killer is of Ashley Babbitt? Why, I mean, there are all of these things where we know that when, that we're, B, we're, when BLM goes and loots something or, or when a cop, you know, kills an un, unarmed black person, we know the killer the next day, the, the photos are up, we know everything. But when it comes to this, they're hiding everything. And the biggest thing to this entire thing is we know the reports that Trump called Pelosi, the, told the FBI and Mitch McConnell, both sides of the aisle, hey, we're getting, we're getting a lot of warnings that there's gonna be, there's some threats that's gonna happen tomorrow. And they both denied Trump's request for 3,000 National Guard to be around the Capitol. And they both said no. Why? We're not alluding to. We're not getting into conspiracy. Saying we know what happened. We're just have. We're, we. These are the questions that need to be answered. Because, I mean, I don't know. You guys have any thoughts about? I think you. I think. I think you know the answer, and that's kind of the sad part about it all. Is that you actually know the answer? So it's like. We have we have one of the most protected buildings in the entire world. We have months leading up. We have months leading up to something that we know is going to attract hundreds of thousands of people. We know in advance where they're going to be walking. We know in advance that there's going to be t thousands of merchandise booths. These people, these people, as as stupid as they are, they're actually very smart. And I think what I think what they understand is psychology, and they understand how to manipulate people that that are in an, that are in a highly charged emotional state. If you put people strategically at the right places at the right corners and you get them to yell and do specific things you can get the you can get the lower tier thinkers around you to act emotionally and follow the mob everybody wants yeah. to be on the winning team everybody wants to be um everybody wants to be part of the pack so when it, when they're like yo let's go let's go block these cops out of 100 people that hear somebody yell that you're going to get 10 people that are going to do it just because they're like yeah, that must be what it is. And it's the people that are higher, higher tier thinkers that are not as easily manipulated that are like, no, that, that, that seems wrong. Like, why would you why would you block the cops? I thought I thought we were pro cop. That doesn't make yeah. any sense. But you get 10 people. Another guy gets 10 people. Now there's 50 people. You get 50 people. You'll pull in another 50 people just because there's 50 people being 50 people. So there's 100 people. 100 people is enough to make a news article, is enough to make a TV shot, enough to make a photo, enough to make it look like the entire planet is burning something to the ground They're, they are very smart and very tactical as stupid as they are about world events and all of these things that are so obvious stuff these people are sick and they're also very very intelligent they understand how to manipulate the weakest amongst the pack and they did exactly that not only up at the capitol but on the street leading up to it they strategically placed people in the right spots to say the right things and they won and they got yeah. everybody boost and as everybody thought that that donnie was going to be sending all these people to jail and sending everybody to the gulag and Joe's going to get arrested on the podium and wait till we'll see what happens. The only people that got arrested were Trump supporters. Literally. We literally got walked into a trap. And that's the thing that like, that's the thing that just threw me about the whole thing is just like, now I trust nobody. And it's just yep. like, to, and the sad part about it all, as much as I'm pro Donnie, if this guy's playing seven dimensional upside down underwater chess and is 35 years ahead and him and his, uh, him and his great grandfather time traveled here to execute this plan, how come, <laughs> How come this dude didn't know that walking 100,000 people that are very angry and upset and the world is about, and, you know, we need to take America back and we need to fight like hell and I'll be there with you. How did he not know that they were going to trap us like that? And that's the thing that throws me off about being like all in Donnie's corner forever. It's like we got trapped. Yeah. And all, like, we 100%. 100%. And no, man, uh, the, the freaking it, vaccines we're still, they're still in control, man. Uh, you got to keep continue yeah. to trust the plan. You know, uh, Biden is actually just... <laughs> Uh, Trump and Biden's skin. No, but I think, you know what, man? I, I think you bring up a solid point. Everything you said, I think, is definitely a point. And I think that what the Democrats are doing is is they over-sensationalize everything um, because they want you to think that they're stupid and they're weak, but really everything that they do is almost tactful. Even the yep. whole Joe Biden dementia stuff, I even feel like to some point Biden is kind of in on it because sure he's old, but guess what? He's still passing legislation that is hurting conservatives everywhere, right? So, like you said, I mean his own his own Department of Homeland Security, his own Department of, of Justice still has political prisoners from January sixth. I was watching Tucker Carlson today that said, "Hey, you know, there's hundreds of people in there that are in isolation, people that have been first offenders, first time offenders." 
Uh, solitary so it, confinement. Know, solitary confinement. And I think that uh, I saw this a lot with like Black Lives Matter where, where I would follow them around and I saw that every single time they went out to riot, their tactics got better. And to us, it looked stupid. It looked childish. They had these little makeshift shields. They had little leaf blowers, like these tiny, scrawny, 130-pound dweebs, right? But they had leaf blowers. But there was a purpose to that leaf blower. You would take a picture of this guy, and the whole internet would laugh. But you know who wasn't laughing? Them, because whenever they would throw tear gas at them, they would leaf blow the tear gas away from themselves. And guess what? Now they're more effective. Why do you think the entire riot squad just uh, uh, resigned in Portland because yep. they've been fighting fighting these rioters for over a year and they've been winning. They're able to light these uh, federal buildings on fire and they're so persistent. And then they went out and celebrated that same night because they said, guess what? You guys might be laughing at everything. You might be laughing at our, our gender pronouns. You might be laughing at our leaf blowers. You might be laughing at our, but guess what we just accomplished? We accomplished for the entire department to resign. And now we get free reign and we get to do and we get to kill. We get to do whatever we want. And now we're driving out these colonizers and these gentrifiers that are, you know, uh, getting into our neighborhoods. We don't want these white people here, this rich class, this middle class. We just want equal communism everywhere. And 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 again, I, I feel like some of the headlines, I feel it's almost like distracting. You know, we, we, we share these headlines and we're like, oh, her, her. Like, look how stupid the left is. But then they're winning in legislation. They continue to dominate our, our institutions. They continue to, I mean, uh, uh, Jordan, I think you and I both shared it today. Uh, tomorrow morning, Democrats uh, are going to be busing in people to Loudoun, Virginia County, uh, to Loudoun County in Virginia. They're, they're raising money to bus in Democrats and Antifa to intimidate Antifa. parents. Your post to intimidate parents and students alike and to intimidate the Loudoun County uh, School Board to tell them you need to pass CRT or we will continue to get bust in by the dozens, by the hundreds, and we will intimidate you. I've seen this everywhere from California now to the East Coast. They bust these people in. We can laugh all we want, but there are political prisoners. These are our brothers, these are patriots. Uh, one of the stories that I heard that was the most surprising and I'll kind of end this little rant with this, there was a man that tried to get out of jail from uh, from isolation. He wanted to go to his dad's funeral, who was a Vietnam veteran, and they denied him. They denied him being able to go see his dad, who was a Vietnam veteran, who got a proper military uh, funeral burial. They denied him being able to go see his dad because he's a political prisoner from January 6th, the deadliest day, according to Joe Biden, the day white supremacists killed police officers, and he's allowed to say these things. But it's effective. What he is saying is protected by tech giants, social media, mainstream media. It is protected because they need that narrative. So it can sound dumb to us, but guess what? It's being defended and promoted by all these institutions that have been taken over by people like them. Everyone, everyone talks about how Trump is playing chess, but if we don't think the guys the the trumps of the left the soros or whoever's funding these you know funding antifa and funding all of these leftist extreme organizations they're playing the game of chess too and i like i like what you said anthony you said you said that you know we we kind of focus too much on the mainstream headlines which is i feel like that's the trap where it's like hey focus on these little conversations of oh hey antifa hit another city or this little thing when really behind, behind there's a whole whole other story that's being completely distract this is causing us to distract of what's really going on and you know me and ross were talking about this um you know i mean we talk about blackrock and we just what you know what COVID actually did and again i talked about this book a little bit ago but love letter to america I'm telling you guys you read the dang book it's going to, you're going to have a bird's eye view of what is going on because what he talks about is how how you destroy a nation from within without any military force. It's through four steps, demoralization, destabilization, a crisis, and then normalization. We, came, we are coming out of the transition right now of a crisis. They have done everything that they can do internally through critical race theory, our educational system. We, I mean, the social justice movements, how they have destroyed and they have created two generations that hate our own country. And they think that our country is still the most racist country in the world when we are the least racist and most progressive country 
on the freaking planet. And yeah, now and, we're – go ahead. Well, so what – and what they're doing with this is they don't realize, like, the, the, the weak people that are – basically have been the reject like among society there's this group of people that has been so weak that in other circumstances where we actually need each other to survive they were never picked for the team because america was too you couldn't do manifest destiny and go west if you were a wuss because we're not going to bring you because you can't hunt you can't fish you can't you can't even carry wood no thanks dog let me get the other guy and you would have got phased out but because strong men and women have done so great at building this country to a place where even the weakest among us can at least exist and survive, we have given them this little pocket to exist inside of, the rejects of society. And they have blossomed there and then started to demand of everybody else in a world that that can only happen if strong men gave you the microphone to be able to say that. But what you yep. don't realize, little lefties, and what you don't realize, people that are being controlled by the by the system and by the machine, is that when you weaken America the way that you're doing right now, something else takes it over. And the something else that will take it over does not have the moral framework that you wish that they had. Who do you think would be better, guys? Guess who's going to take it over? Oh, China. They got a million Muslims in concentration camps right now. What do you think that they'll do to your flamboyant ass? Yeah. Like well, now and not only that, but, I mean, think, I mean, think about it. The left, I mean, <laughs> the equality, socialism. I mean, all of the 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 arguments that we see that people protest in the streets, they lined up, gave away their freedoms, masked up, kept their children masked, closed their businesses, still had to pay rent. Thirty five businesses in all of America have been destroyed and wiped out. All. Amazon and Walmart and everything else could stay open. All the institutions could stay open. The rich got richer. The middle class got destroyed. And we're, and we're, we're here talking about, it's just, it's, it's, it is. It has to end. It has to end with local stuff. Eventually it's going to have to become that. I don't know how much the United States of America by itself can actually influence what's happening in the global picture right now. I mean, there's like four companies that basically own every bite of food that you have ever taken and every piece of clothing that you've ever worn and every piece of every drop of gas you put in your car and the car and your house and the real estate company you got it all from. So like seeing that makes me be like, I don't know how much opposition there can be, but I know <clears> one <throat> thing, my dad, my daddy didn't raise no food. I'm at least going to try. I'm at least going right. to be like, I'm not going to shut up. You're not. You gotta kill me, dude. You gotta kill yeah. me. You know? I think that I think that you bring up a really good point in that you know we you, strong men have kind of handed over the society over to the weakest people that uh, you know given two three hundred years ago that had to fend for themselves uh, probably would not have survived uh, definitely let alone uh, let 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 allow or be allowed to lead. So this is kind of like the problem, and I bring up this point a lot. And of course, there's m multi layers to it, but this is a problem with a live and let live society. You have these self-righteous strong men that want to kind of uh, cuck themselves over to weaker men and say, you know what, we've been mean to them before, or, or you know what, maybe they're right in that, you know, we don't want to be called labels, we don't want to be called phobics, we don't want to be called is of any kind, so therefore maybe we should just kind of back off, let them reign over for a bit. Well, today there was an article about this transgender uh, that's going to the Olympics, and they, they said, you know, what, what motivated you to kind of get into the Olympics Transgender is like, well, I can't wait to win. Like, basically, they <laughs> they said, uh, they said, my whole motivation to to win the Olympics is to win gold and burn the American flag for the for the world wow. to see. And I'm just like, is, is this an American? Yeah, this yeah. Is an American some Olympian. kind of Viking. Or yeah. Something. And so to me, it's like, is America so self so self destructive that we're willing to freedomize destroying ourselves? Like there's got to be some kind of morality. There's got to be, you know, there's a saying that says if you don't impose your morality on others, which I think Christian morality, whether you're an atheist or a Christian, uh, bodes well for our nation, then someone else will impose their morality on you. So you can be weak. You can live and let live. You can allow, you know, oh, well, I just I, I just want to be left alone. OK, great. But evil 
because this all just boils down to good versus evil. 100%. Right? You're, you're going to have evil people that say, well, I'm very glad that you think that way. I'm very glad that you're so weak and passive and complacent. I'm very glad that all you want to do is work at corporate hours, eight to five, come home, binge watch, eat your McDonald's, play with the boys on Warzone for six, seven hours a day. You know, I, I, we can all play this is that, you know, whatever. Uh, but but I'm glad you think that way because we're about to take over. We yeah. have every institution under our control. While, while you're being lazy and, and you're being complacent and you're skipping church and, and maybe you don't even work out and you just want to live and let live and be left alone, we are taking over every institution to include the church where now we have the first transgender pastor, we have the first transgender priest, we have the first bisexual this, we have the first... And, and these are Christian institutions, yeah, Christian institutions. And we're just like, well, you know, maybe I shouldn't speak out because then they'll come after me, you know. And it, it's like the saying goes, you know, first they came for, for my, you know, for, for these people. But because I wasn't these people, I didn't care. Then they came after, you know, the Mormons, but I'm not a Mormon and I didn't care. Then they came after my neighbor, but because that was my neighbor, not me, then I didn't care. Then they came for me and there was no one else left to defend everything that we've built basically you know and so yep. you're very right in that unfortunately today we have very weak men uh that have allowed and kind of handed over everything we've built everything our ancestors built to the weakest denominators and and you know there's a, a another quick quote that just says and i'll end it with this is you know if you fail to get politically active and engaged then you're just handing it over to yes. the weak and the inferior to rule over you because yep. they will take that opportunity. No weak person that wants to impose their morality is not going to take the opportunity that you are complacent and submissive. Yep. They will take that. They will take that. They will run with it. No, and we're, they will we're, impose their morality on you. We are in the position that we are in now and we're living in the country we are in now because of exactly that we, and again, like, we, I mean, a lot, a lot of people, a lot, especially me, I was working, working on my music. I was focusing on my career. I was, you know, that was what I went to put my businesses, entrepreneurship, family. I don't want to have to go to a precinct committee meeting, or I don't want to go to the school board meetings. I don't want to be engaged in the politics because they're boring. And, you know, those politicians we will let them do that. But now we're at a place where all that crap doesn't even matter. Because we're watching, we're coming out of this crisis period where we're about to, what's happening now? I mean, I think, Anthony, you posted this also about the new, uh, what's happening in Los Angeles. I, I looked at it, that effective June 23rd, 2021, uh, for the schools, they're still going to have mandatory, di you know, social distancing. And, you know, they're, like basically, they're California and Washington states all over the country, they're forcing vaccine passports and they're trying to normalize everything that we've now just come out of so it's like we've gone through this crisis period these governors still have all of their emergency money and they're keeping it in crisis emergency mode because they get full on power which he talks about in this book and you need the crisis for local governors that are a part of this chess game so to say to take their place in, in, in power and that and that is literally what we're seeing and we're seeing this all over the country New York district attorney just dropped 20 charges for 20 BLM looters that destroyed businesses in New York City, released them, dropped all the charges. No, duh, the cops are resigning. And this, if we think that this is just like, oh, you know, let them off. No, this was, this is, this is, it is bigger than just 20 guys just got let off. This is bigger because there's people at the top that are telling the district attorney what to do because they want to. They want to encourage people, hey, you can keep doing this BS. You can still loot and destroy and do everything in the name of BLM, and there'll be no repercussions from it. And Tifa, that's why Portland's a shithole right now. Excuse my French. That is why New York and and we can talk about all, all of these cities all over the country. They keep doing what they're doing because they know that they got – they know that they get, they get released with, with, without any charges. No duh, our police don't want to do anything. And yeah, I watched so the cops in, in Portland. I watched the cops sit there in their cop cruiser as these two little girls, uh, you know, 25-year-olds, were just writing BLM all, all with spray paint all on the wall next to them and stuff. They didn't do anything. It's intentional. All of it's planned. 
you know, it's, 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 it's a big fat joke, this whole entire thing. And that's the frustrating part. And it, like, look, like I got a neighbor that wears a plate carrier and carries his AR all the time, you know, type of thing. And I'm like, I'm, you know, my head, I'm like that guy, you know? And then I'm like, actually <laughs> fast forward six months. And they're like, Hey, we found out that your kid, uh, didn't renounce their, their skin color at school today and they didn't want to take the vaccine. So we're just here to check <laughs> on you and make sure the family's okay. And you're like, yeah, everything's fine. You're like, well, we need to come in and see. And you're like, well, hang on, I don't endorse that. Well, because there was a threat to the safety of him and of the kids around him, we actually have the right to come in. And then you're going to wish that you had your shit. You're going to wish yep. that you had it. Because it's a matter yep. of time before this shit does bite you. And I'm not saying that to be offensive and go after people in a violent way. No, conservatives by and large condemn all offensive assault types of things. If we're defensive mechanism, leave us the hell alone and we're not going to do whatever. But like you have to realize this thing doesn't stop when you simply agree to it. It takes more and more and more of you and it will have more and more control of you. And the freedom, the very freedom that you condemn everybody else for wanting to have well, you know, it's everybody who's under 35, though. You know, there's not really anybody over 35 years old that, that sucks the ding-dong of freaking <laughs> the left like, like everybody who's under 35 does. And the reason for that is because you're too stupid when you're, 20 and young, when you're 25 and 28 and younger to have gone through a disappointing experience in your life and realize that sometimes when you join a cult, and you think it's the reason that you're alive and you're actually bringing change to the world, that you're actually being brainwashed and used for something that doesn't have to do with your benefit. You're just a pawn in the whole game. And you don't know that kind of stuff until you're over 30, which makes sense why they're going after our kids in school. Because they, yeah. they don't want them to get a chance to be like, oh, actually, socialism doesn't work. They don't want that. You know, so they got to catch them early and get them all motivated, full of zeal and no knowledge, which is a dangerous pe people group to be. Yeah. Bobby, you got something? I I don't disagree with the I don't disagree with the general idea of what you're saying, Ross. However, I will say that I don't think that it's fair to say anyone under X age thirty, twenty five, or course, otherwise. Of course, there's always the you know you get it. So, <laughs> well, of course, right? Everybody, everybody knows there's a twenty one year old right. kid out there that's got their head on their shoulders. But by and large, if you're under thirty in this country and you don't have conservative values, you're retarded. Well, I, I mean, I wouldn't say retarded. I would say uninformed. I don't know that that's helpful either. What I'm what I'm trying to say is he look, just went start tumor on us. I think that the, the I think that a lot of the times what I've kind of noticed is that I hate to, I, I hate to use this analogy because it's kind of stupid, but I was just trying to think of one when we were talking when you guys were talking. I'm like I don't know what makes sense, but let's just pretend like the problem is a tree, right? We're up here like we're up here like trimming leaves and we're looking at the stem at the top and we're not taking care of the one thing that really matters, the root cause of it all. Like we're not looking at the soil that the roots are growing in. We're up here like trying to prune all of the top pieces without addressing the single problem. And I think that oftentimes complicated problems have simple solutions. And I think that if we were to really just try to figure out What's just like one thing? What's like a one core thing that if people just generally did that thing, it would solve all the things that go up the tree after that. And I think that what that thing is, is people being, people normalizing doing research about the things that happen to you in your life and protecting yourself, not only your body, but your mind, but the information that comes across you, but protecting yourself from the people that are around you and understanding that the world is not carpeted and not everybody is going to be nice to you. And there's a lot of evil in the world and there's also a lot of good, but protecting, protecting that idea that we have to be able to go out and research. If you go out and a bank and a bank gets you to convinces you to sign some contract where you sign your house, away or you sign some really bad loan or you sign you agree to something that's gonna that's gonna screw you financially i hate to t i hate to break it to you but that's your fault and i think that normalizing the idea of you having to protect yourself and you having the liberty to make your own mistakes and the liberty to have things that are not good happen to you is something that's not popular because everybody just has they get clapped by society they get clapped by something bad happening and they just look to daddy government to solve the problem and the, the answer to all of this is more personal dependence and more personal responsibility us taking us really taking a real 
a real responsibility for all the good and bad things that come into our life at the very, very beginning. And it's like, what are the parents doing? Like, what are the, how, what kind of family unit are you being raised in? It's like, we're, we're addressing all the problems up top and not, not the bottom. And I, I agree. think that if we did more research and we, we took care of ourselves instead of always looking for some external to solve our problems, the, the world would be a better place. But I don't I think that's a problem with anybody over 40. If you're over 40, your brain already <laughs> does that. Like, I, seriously. Well, your brain already does that. You go, well, I got to make sure I do whatever. Because when I was 18 years old, mama left to get cigarettes. She died by that car accident. Well, now there's, everybody's got styrofoam all around them, and nobody gets hurt when they do anything. There's a lot of there's a lot of 40, 50 year old people that are protesting and yelling and screaming and carrying around signs just saying. I, I'm saying it's like these people don't they don't understand that they are personally responsible for prote for protecting themselves and it's like the, the idea of liberty and smaller government means that like you hold your own shit down and we're always it's like everybody's going out in the streets and screaming about things and protesting things and it's like i love watching fleckas i don't know if you guys watch fleckas talks yeah. on youtube this dude interviews 200 people and they don't even know why they're there. And it's Literally. just like, that's the thing. It's like your average everyday person doesn't pay attention to 95% of the things in their life that actually matters. And they focus on the 5%, the bullshit that's inconsequential. And then when they get clapped by not paying attention to the 95, they have no or daddy government or some type of higher authority that can rescue them and and that mentality is the root cause of all of these things yep. i think that is the problem behind everything well i, before, I know are you, but are you guys, are you guys though, the, no i'm i'm good uh, but at okay. the same time though you've got you've got you've got these investment corporations that all they do is sit is sit together and go, how can we provide $58 billion to these two sectors for 14 year olds to 18 year olds to screw up their mind, to make them dependent on our ideology. And so as much yep. as it's like personal responsibility, like parents get their kids for like two hours a day, the world gets them for the other 12 if you're doing normal life. And it's like, you have to be careful because the world is not neutral. It's not a neutral zone anymore. Like your kid right. can't, your kid can't go to the library and come back unscathed without you having to be like, so tell me, what did you see? Oh, they asked you that weird question. What did they imply when they asked you that question? You know, like, are you a girl or a boy to my daughter? Like, okay, I have to, I have to go into my daughter's brain, go to the log and be like, Hey, when they asked you the question of, are you a girl or a boy? They actually didn't need to do that. You are a girl and you look like a girl along with 99.9% .9 of all of humanity. So they were just being <laughs> weird. You know what I'm saying? Well, so let's, it's like, let's, there's so let's, much. I mean, I, I, agree. I, I completely agree. So this, we have about 10, 15 minutes the most left. And I want to get to kind of what, and I want to ask all three of you guys this, because what Bobby's analogy, I actually like the analogy, you have this tree and it's huge. I think the only thing I would add, add to your analogy is I feel like we're in a freaking jungle or forest and there's thousands of trees that are all linked to one root and we don't know where the hell the root is coming from. Um, and so like in your guys' conversations, I have someone that's very close to me that was, you know, raised conservative. Now they, you know, during the BLM stage of indoctrination completely got taken taken that way and a lot of these people like and i say this all the time a lot of people on the left or even not and i'm not talking leftists or i would say even a lot of people that voted for joe biden let's just say that i don't i don't think the majority of these people are they like we hate america i think a lot of them are like they've been duped by propaganda and i feel like if they actually did have a moment where they're like oh my gosh this is horrible. If they actually saw what Mar how Marxism gets started and how it starts and how you destroy a country from within and you start seeing these root causes, people will be like, I don't want that for my children. I don't want that for my family. So, you know, obviously one thing that we've been preaching from the mountaintops every single live, get involved in your local government. So we, you know, if you go to speaktruth.fear.com, you put in your email, we send you a one page document that teaches you in three simple steps how to do this. So what Con, you know, let's just say, all, and I want to hear all, what all three of you guys are going to say. So you're, you're talking with someone or you're, let's say you're like Flecka, you're in the street, you're talking to a random guy. Why are you protesting? And that person's going to give you five minutes of un, like, un, like uninterrupted attention 
They're going to take everything that you're going to say to heart. What are you going to say to them to try to show them, hey, there's a lot more to see than what you're what you're seeing. Like, what is that conversation that are you going to talk more about Marxism or are you talking about like what what what's the conversation that you, if you got five minutes with someone that someone's like, hey, enlighten me, I'm open. What are you going to say? I think that um, no, those conversations are definitely ha uh, great to have. I, I kind of left the whole debating uh, stage uh, quite a while back there. They're great for for videos and sound bites and making a great video, great flex like video for sure. That's a good point. And I'm not knocking it at all. Uh, but what I what I will say is th this is a problem that I saw. Uh, I I would spend sometimes hours uh, a week debating leftists, uh, you know, atheists, et cetera, et cetera. And what would happen is we would have a great dialogue. But what happens after you have that great conversation? Maybe maybe you kind of change your mind a little bit. But where do they go back to? Especially these college age high school age children, they go back to the indoctrination camps. So maybe you enlighten them on something. Maybe you're like, well, did you know that Marxism is actually really bad and socialism sucks? Then they're like, oh man, I never thought about it that way. That's a great conversation to have. Maybe I'll think about this a little bit more. And then they go back to school the next day and they join their feminist uh, group. They join the little Marxist group. They join the little socialist group. They don't want to feel left out. So even if they go back to school and they're or they go back to work and they're talking like, hey, man, did you I had this great conversation yesterday? Well, now what's going to happen? And this happens again uh, with a, a Christian that maybe or someone that's like looking into biblical truths. They're going to start being attacked by demons. Right. Lesions. Be, lesions are going to be like, no, we can't let this happen. We can't ha have this person be transformed. So what happens is a lot of these kids, a lot of these college students that you just had a conversation with they go back to these indoctrination camps and they're so overpowered by so much propaganda because again the left controls these institutions that it, it was almost kind of futile and 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 it to some point if that video makes it out to you know like let's say flake has had a conversation with someone and then that person says where can i watch that video of our conversation and then you're like hey just follow me on youtube and flake us and then Fleckus edits it to make this person look like a moron and they didn't bring out a good, you know, great talking points. And then the comments are filled by people like, oh, the moron that he interviewed in segment number three, what a dumbass, what this. He, and this guy goes to this university, he pays this much money. So what is that going to do to that person that was maybe changing his mind? He's going to look at it and be like, bro, what? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I hate these people, you know? Like, <clears throat> look at all these people laughing at me, you know? Like, I was trying to have an honest conversation, so... I, I will say so where, though, so that, where do you, so then where do you guys I mean where do you guys think I kind of feel like that's necessary though like we've stopped bullying people and rightly so but like <laughs> okay rightly so we've stopped bullying people but there's some stuff that growing up that there's some stuff that growing up in the neighborhood really helps you with like you know what I never you know what I never I'm always conscious of this when I was growing up I heard one time somebody joke white people they're like I don't know you're gonna marry your cousin. And I was like, why do people marry their cousin? And so guess what I did every time I hung out with my kind of pretty cousin? I was like, yo, whatever happens, I'm your only family. And even though there was no need to reinforce that in my head, thank you, bullying. I never struggled with liking a cousin. And maybe I would have. But so here's what I'm saying. Like, look, I think bullying has a place in society. It's just not where it was when it was super toxic. But, like, telling people you suck – like. What, this dummy goes to Harvard and never even knew that, like, the, the this person backs up BLM and doesn't know that Patrice Cullors calls herself a trained Marxist? Okay. What do you, do you know math? You know what I'm but saying? But I think like, the, the root problem is, is when you I'm start with you, asking I'm with people. You. Overall, though, hold on. I keep making demons with these two guys. I'm not saying you're wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying no, you're no, wrong, no. either one of you. No, but I'm what, what, what I, I was, agree with you. What I was it's getting not at. overall helpful. But what was your real solution, Anthony? What were you going to no, no, say yeah. to do? No, no, yeah, of course. So I, I think it goes back to that same analogy, right, where we're kind of at the top and we're just kind of trimming away at leaves, right? Like, oh, socialism sucks. Boom. That little leaf just got cut down. Oh, you know, no more communism. Boom, that little leaf. But the root cause is the institution itself that is indoctrinating its children. So unless you have a new generation of educators, it, unless you have parents that are going to the school boards, unless you have, uh, you know, students that are being trained better, that are being equipped better to kind of face these because, you know, I, I did 10 years in the military, I got out, and then I went back to school to change my to change my com complete career. And when I went back, this was 2019. I 
picked up on the indoctrination and I was able to pick on it, pick up on it because I'm educated. I have, uh, I already have a degree uh, in higher learning. I have life experience. And so the school that I was going to, um, it receives federal funding. Any school that receives federal funding has to teach about the constitution day. They had, there's like four days out of the year that they have to teach all students about. And this was a very feminist, radical teacher teaching the constitution. She was going through the amendments. She's like, this one's outdated. We don't need a second amendment anymore. So I'm not even going to go through that one. And I was like, well, hold up, you know, like you're, you're teaching, I'm looking around and I'm like, you know, I, I kind of felt like uh, Adam Sandler in that movie where like he goes back to school and it's like, you know, I'm, I'm the only big one there and everyone's <laughs> like 17 and 18, you know, and I'm just like, well, why is the Second Amendment not needed anymore? You know, and then she's like, oh, don't tell me you're like this guy and blah, blah, blah. And I'm literally wearing like grunt style, like, you know, like on, on my shirt. And she's like, oh, are you a veteran? Please don't be like one of those guys. And I'm like, look, man, you have a duty to teach these children what's right, and what's wrong. And what you're doing right now is you're indoctrinating. You're you're not teaching the Constitution. You're teaching them your beliefs, and you want everyone to believe the same way. And the moment I spoke up against you, you started giving me grief. But I am going to I am going to fight you. I am yeah. going to tell you that this is what I fought for for over a decade in the military is to uphold these morals, these values, the yeah. Constitution, and the thing. And the moment she got a little bit of, like, she just kind of backed down. She's like, all right, I don't want any more raised hands. I'm just going to teach the Constitution. I'm just going to read it verbatim. That way I'm not accused of indoctrinating. And I'm like, dude, if we just push back a little bit, a little bit, like, they're going to feel that pressure. And they're going to, I feel like a lot of them were kind of I, I scared. I just wonder if, it, if a little bit's enough now. I, I feel like. Well, no, I like that. Of, I like that. I think he's right. I think, I, think, I, I think I've been saying this for a while, but we need to start saying it more. And that is, don't let people say stupid things anymore without confronting them. Yes. We've, agree, let, correct, we've yeah. let people say dumb things and been like, hmm, agree to disagree. No. In a society where we all have to come together around ideas, the ideas and whether they work or not are kind of relevant to whether you should let somebody believe them. Like, for instance, all white people are inherently racist. Well, that sounds like a damn dangerous idea that might end up in some violence at some point in the future. So when you hear it, go, hey, why did you say that dumb thing just now? <laughs> yeah, It'd right. be confrontational. It's time. And it's not even yeah. that hard. Like like you yeah. said, they back down as soon as you say anything. Yeah, right. and we got we got about five minutes left. I want to let Bobby get a word in. The Oh, yeah, Bobby, go, go for it. Well – to address the first point, which was about the like, if somebody's if, that Anthony said about like, if somebody sees the video and people are saying that this person's stupid, it's like, you know, sometimes the hard truth is 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 unfortunate, but sometimes that kind of like that that hard way of learning something helps a lot. There's been a lot of times where where like I've had strong men in my life that have been like, don't be a bitch, like you need yeah. to you need to fix this, and sometimes it takes people to give you that brutal honesty that that causes you to change. And there's a lot of different ways that one can learn. And I'm not necessarily saying like, hey, let's let's publicly bully the people, but I do think that sometimes like <laughs> like uh, one of my favorite quotes is like, it's it's easier to it's easier to wear slippers than carpet the whole world. It's sometimes it's necessary that we got to be like, look. This is what it is. Like, here you are in the public square. This is what people are saying about it, and that's the end of it. Now, as far as what I would say to that person, I think one of the most valuable pieces of, of the, the most valuable things, the most valuable tactics for helping me learn how to be successful in life was people teaching me not what to think, but how to think. And I think that, like, my college football coach, my parents, and the people that were that were strong people in my life growing up, they never were like, this is how it's supposed to be. This is what you should think. This is how it is. They would just be like, this is how you th should think. You should be unwavering in your beliefs. You should stay strong with your convictions. You should not let 10 people screaming in your face convince you to do something that you know is wrong. If you, if you, if you understand how to think, you will, you will learn what to think just just on its own because you'll have that self-confidence internally you have the self-confidence to 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 be a, to be an independent thinker and fight when all these other people are coming at you and the thing that's so crazy what's been so interesting about 2020 and 2021 which i think is so helpful about the internet is that the people that have stayed independent been independent thinkers are being rewarded for standing yeah. out against that and there's a lot of examples of a lot of accounts that are growing gangbusters because people are like look 
this person is doing differently than all of us. And I bet all of all four of our accounts and many other accounts have grown exponentially because of that reason. We yeah. need people that are independent thinkers. We need people that, that show by example that they understand how to think. And if we can just share the message of how to think about things, then all of these things will solve themselves in and of itself. We don't have to be like Marxism is bad and school indoctrination is bad and big government is bad. If we can just tell them like, be independent, protect yourself, you're going to just naturally start to understand that, hey, big government is bad. Government control is bad. Large centralized control over a vast majority of people is bad. You losing more of your money and losing more of your freedom is bad. The power being not in your, not within yourself, but in some centralized institution is bad. And when you know how to think, those things become obvious over time. And that's why I say starting at the root is the solution. All of the things that you guys are talking about and, and all the things that, uh, that Anthony said, all those things are spot on. But it's like, it still doesn't go all the way, way down to the very root, which is like, be an independent thinker, be pro-America, focus on liberty and freedom, and like, protect yourself, and no one's going to save you. I think at the root, if you if you look at just the root, I think the, the root would be learn to think about why you should believe what you're being told to believe. It's probably the yeah. best thing to say. Marxism, it sounds like it's a good thing. Why? Just ask why all the oh, time. Yeah. And then pretend that the person telling you the information is lying entirely. And then go figure out if they were telling the truth. And if you yeah, can and do that in life, you're going to win. But for everybody who's too lazy to do that, just think about this. If you beat up America, the next guy who's really strong is going to kill you and kick your ass because they're not nice like Americans. So probably don't probably don't shit where you eat for like the yeah. next hundred years. And I, yeah, I will, our team. and I will, I will say to like any Christian out there, you know, this is like an give, easy give argument me, to Anthony, win. Anthony, give me thirty seconds, and then we got we got to wrap this thing. Yeah, up. yeah, no worries. Finish, um, but thoughts, what you were saying about the foundation is. Take a look at Marxism. Where, anywhere, can you see that they promote Christ or God or yeah. godly values? Nowhere. So that should be an easy tell for any Christian, any man of Christ, any you know Catholic, whatever. Um, if your foundation is in Christ, which I think is the, the most important foundational root of any problem, of any institution, etc., is to first promote godly values and morality, uh, even impose them on society. Because, again, even in a godly society, in a Christian society, anyone, including atheists, thrive. We're not out here throwing people off of, you know, rooftops uh, that we don't agree with their lifestyles. <laughs> exactly. We treat them as equals and we love them as equals. Uh, but what I, you know, again, what I will say is take a look at Marxism. It sounds great. It kind of all even kind of sounds a little bit biblical, right? Treat everyone. Everyone's equal. Give away riches, blah, blah, blah. But they never promote God. None of their banners, none of their messages say turn to Christ, turn to God. But restore the family. As, and as a matter of fact, Black Lives Matter, a Marxist institution, they say they're anti-nuclear family, which is what God created and wanted from the beginning. So there's your answer to any Christian. Look at any Marxist organization or message. Do they promote God or Christ? No. And so yeah, and, from right there, and, it's you should already know. Every country that's ever turned to communism, Marxism, God has to be out of the picture. And the reason why is because the government can't become God if they people put their trust in God. Um, and we're, we're going to wrap this thing up, but I want to make two quick points. Number one, we're at the place where we are today because, and I, it was before I was like, yeah, we're the silent majority. The silent majority is the reason why we're here today because we were silent because we were scared of being canceled, scared of offending people, scared of speaking truth. Um, and then also, I mean, even the whole Q thing, the Q caused, Q caused us just wait, just, you know, trust the plan, stay quiet. This, like, it, it was that whole thing that got us to the place where we are, where now we're at a place where we have to shine light on the lies and the darkness that's happening because this is, it's a full on internal Marxist takeover. When you have the Attorney General Merrick Garland come out and tell the entire nation that the number one threat for the United States of America is white supremacy, like, no. Because we just, I just watched Giovanni in Chicago get lit up with his wife in a car with his Puerto Rico flag out. Don't tell me that white supremacy is the number one issue in our country because it is not. We have to get to the root that's causing this violence. And so, again, I think, you know, everyone, I mean, the conversations are important. I think, you know, speaking truth without fear, no pun intended, is important. 
Um, again, the document that we have, guys, it is, I'm telling you, it's so important for everyone to get involved in their local governments. Anthony talked about it. Bobby talked about it. Ross talked about it. We have to start getting involved. No more complaining. No more debating and spending four hours a week or eight hours a week on Facebook, going back and forth on Facebook. Take that energy to the school board. Take that energy to the city council meetings. Take that energy and follow the actual politicians on social media and attack them on social media, not some dude in a basement with blue hair that, that has nothing to do, and they're just literally looking to troll you. And so it's so important. It, the time is now that we have to start getting engaged because if not, we will lose this country and we will lose our freedoms. Um, real quick, guys, everyone that's on here, there's an arrow at the top. It's a little pointed arrow that looks like this. Yeah, right where Ross is looking. Click that button. It's going to drop down. Follow Anthony. Follow Bobby. Follow Ross. If you guys want to follow my personal Don't account. Don't follow me. Don't follow me. <laughs> um, if you want to follow my personal account, my Instagram is Jordan Sarmo. Again, make sure that as well you guys go to speaktruthwithoutfear.com. Put in your email. Uh, Bobby, Anthony, Ross. Thank you again. Good we're to meet you, fellas. I wasn't trying to be disagreeable. I was I was just trying to get to the, to the <laughs> Yes, whatever. you were, Ross. I, was just... <laughs> I kind of was, but not fully. I like you guys. I love you Absolutely. guys. Thank you. Thanks you guys for having me, man.